All right, so the last third of the Iditarod is, let's say, from Caltag or wherever along the Yukon that you took your mandatory aid to the finish line in Nome. Um, the Bering Sea coast is my favorite part of the Iditarod because it's what's happening during that portion of the race. We're actually racing now. You know, you've already built your team in the first third, you positioned your team in the second third, and now it's time to race that team. So when I leave my mandatory eight, if I did my job right in the first and second third, I should have a really strong, really fast team. It won't necessarily be the fastest team in the race, but I want to be the healthiest, strongest team in the race. And there's a lot of ways we can make up time. One of those ways is by outrunning your competition. Another way is by doing longer runs than your competition, but still taking nice long breaks. Another way is to do shorter runs, but then really shorten those rests up. Um, so I guess it's always possible to pull, if you stored energy in your team, you can pull that out of your team as you go up the coast as you need to, but not taking unnecessary risks. So this portion, um, no, it's time to win the race. That's really the goal. It's very clearly defined. And I guess what I'm thinking about as I'm going through this is having a healthy buffer. You know, I wanna make sure that I can win this thing. I'm making sure I'm close enough to the teams ahead of me. If there's really fast or really, really strong teams behind me that I have enough of a lead or I know how to race them up the coast that forces them to, to abandon their speed to catch up with me. And I don't mind if one of those teams does catch up with me I don't mind a foot race. I don't mind us leaving Koyak, you know, five minutes apart. That's fine by me, as long as I have the stronger team. So you'll see, hopefully, or possibly at the end of the race, you'll see me take an extra long rest because I think I can afford to do that. I'm gonna let somebody catch up, um, but I'm not gonna let them catch up easily. I'm gonna make it cost their team something to be able to race me head to head. And that makes our relative strength have a bigger disparity so you know, it gives me a better shot to race them. But the key to remember on this one is, yes, we wanna to get to the finish line as fast as possible, but the faster you go, and when I say faster, I mean actual moving speed, amount of rest time, the length of runs, all the things that cause us to get down the trail faster. The faster you go often comes with an elevated risk because as good as we are and as much as we know these teams, uh, the mushers still are guessing to a certain degree. You know, we're assuming the team is gonna look like this if we do a 60 mile run and a four hour rest, right? But we can misjudge that. So risk management is really important here. So what I'm actually looking for is not the fastest way. You know, it's the safest way that gets us there at first. What gives us the highest probability of winning it? For example, let's say if I did all the, the four super runs, the four long runs from Caltag to Unilcleat at 70 something miles, Unilcleat all the way to Koyuk at 80 something miles, Koyuk all the way to White Mountain at 88 miles, White Mountain to Nome at 70 miles. If I did all those, let's say on uh, three hour rests in between each one, that would be an insanely aggressive schedule. And yes, there's a chance my team could do that, but it's a 5% chance. Um, so we're not just going all out trying to go crazy. We're trying to find the schedule relative to our competition that gives us the highest probability of winning. And a great example of that is in 2021, I felt like I had a commanding lead from 300 miles into the race. And the whole rest of the race was not about trying to get farther away from second place or farther away from the rest of the pack. It was about staying in front in the most guaranteed fashion. I had seen too many mushers get four Iditarod wins and miss that fifth win by you know, either a fluke or getting a little too confident so we really had to drive the whole last two thirds of that race with one foot on the brake. But you know, I feel like I know how to do that. So final portion of the race, the objective is to win the race. So play it safe, do what you need to do to win, but don't do any more than that. Win as easily as possible and make that last third of the race you know, and the dog's experience as easy as possible for them. Um, and be aware of your competition. This is the one place in the race that you do need to know what the, what the competition's doing, where they are. Uh, yes, you have to focus on your team. You do that the whole way. In the first two thirds, you almost exclusively focus on your team. And the last third, you've got to be aware of the competition. And with luck, all this comes together and you get to know them first.